Hello, this is Sandra Ostroberos bringing you a few words of Bible from the heart of Biblical Israel. This week's Torah portion is Lech Lecha, and it begins with Genesis 12, one of the most important chapters in the Bible. And of course, from this point on, rather than the Bible be the story of humanity, which it is essentially the first 11 chapters, it becomes the story of the nation of Israel. And we see the initial foundations of that um of the nation of Israel here in the selection of Abraham. God calls to Abraham, sends him to what will become the land of Israel, then referred to as the land of Canaan, makes him promises, promises him, of course, that he will um, give this land, the land of Canaan, the land of Israel, to his children. So we have implicit in that promise, a promise that Abraham will be uh, the father of the, of the nation, who will indeed inherit this land the land of Israel. Uh, last week we talked about the Tower of Babel and I would like to discuss about how the results of that um, that sin, that terrible incident, how that produces um, Abraham, the Abraham and of course ultimately the foundation of the nation of Israel that we see in this week's um, uh, in this week's chapter. So first of all, the connecting verses between the conclusion of the story of the Tower of Babel until this week's Torah portion, until the beginning of chapter 12, is just a list of genealogy. And we begin with Shem. Shem being one of, or Sem, being one of the sons of Noah. And we focus in on, on his genealogy, which brings us ultimately to Abraham. And once we meet Abraham, the next step, of course, is chapter 12, where God calls out Abraham, and then the story becomes the story of Abraham and his descendants. So, ironically, if we remember in the story of the Tower of Babel, uh, the purpose of the of the people there who are building this tower, they say they want to make for themselves a name. And the a name is Shem. Shem, the very same word as the name of Sem, the son of Noah. And I, I don't think this is a coincidence because I think basically what, what the Bible is telling us is that the initial um, goal of the people of the Tower of Babel was a negative one. They wanted to make themselves a shame, but a shame that would go, run counter to God's purposes and counter to the freedoms uh, and that he uh, established for human beings. Uh, on the other hand, the correct direction that God wants this world to go in will be experienced and will be realized through Shem of a different kind, this individual Shem, who will eventually produce a descendant named Abraham. Now God selects Abraham, and again, we can see this idea of a selection of one person to, fa to father one nation, although actually Abraham will be the father of many nations, but only one nation will uh, inherit these initial promisings uh, that God makes to him about the land and, and the people of Israel. Um, but this, all, again, is a direct outgrowth of what happened at the Tower of Babel, because if initially there was one nation, um, all of humanity was one nation, uh, the original plan, or at least the original trial or chance that God gave to humanity, was that his word and his will would be reflected uniformly through all of humanity. But that clearly broke down with the Tower of Babel, and God then created many nations. Now, at the end of Deuteronomy, uh, Moses said something very interesting. There's a, a song of Moses at the very end of Deuteronomy, and he kind of recaps like the, whole, the history of mankind and the history of, of Israel. And he says as follows, uh, this is Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 8. He says, when the Most High... Uh, divided the territories among the nations. When he separated the sons of Adam, he established the boundaries of nations according to the numbers of the children of Israel. This verse refers to the results of the Tower of Babel. And what it essentially says is that in that time, at the time in which God separated humanity into different nations, he already at that point divvied up the earth and assigned different pieces of land to different nations. And then at that time, of course, at what, what Moses is saying in, in Deuteronomy 32 is that God first began by figuring out what piece of land would go to the children of Israel, and then based upon, based upon what the children of Israel would need, and after that, divided up the rest of the world. So again, this verse connects very much so 
the selection of Israel and the selection of the um, of the land of Israel and the people of Israel to the results of the Tower of Babel. And where we see that is right here in the beginning of Genesis 12, where God understands that if humanity now is going to divide it into many, many nations, he still needs a vehicle through which to speak to humanity. And if he is not going to be able to speak directly to all of humanity because they're not going to be listening, because they're going to be building towers and they're worrying about controlling civilization and controlling humanity and controlling and, and power, then he has to go a different route. And that route is Abraham. And and what he says, and, and I think um, many, many people who um, love Israel love to quote Genesis 12.3. And Genesis 12, 3 says, I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you, and through you will be blessed all the families of the earth. And at its most basic level, and I think this is how many Christian Zionists understand it, at its most basic level, initially at least, is that those who bless Israel will be blessed. And I have no quarrel with that. That is certainly a wonderful thing, and I think that is something that people experience when they bless the Jewish people, when they bless Israel. They see in their own lives, a blessing. But here I think there's something far deeper that's actually going on. What God has said is he's setting aside Abraham as the vehicle through which the entire world will be blessed. Uh, Abraham, if you will, will become his shofar, his trumpet. It will be the vehicle through which God reveals himself to the world. And we will see that throughout Abraham's life. There are many things that he does and many people that he meets throughout the nations. He goes to the Philistines. He goes to Egypt. He, he is involved in this huge world war, the four kings against the five kings. And he, and he encounters the king of Sodom. And he encounters um, uh, uh, Melchizedek, the king of, of um, Salem, which is Jerusalem. Um, and, and in that encounter between Melchizedek and Abraham, we see this enormous blessing to God that comes from Melchizedek. And this reflects to us what Abraham's role is. Abraham is out there just being an ordinary person. He is not seeking power. He is not a king. But he's out there bringing the word of God, bringing justice, bringing uh, divine concepts of justice to a world that is so pagan and is so steeped in 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 bad ideologies and um and that begins here uh, in genesis 12 and i believe that this is really um the foundation of what isaiah says so many so many years later when he talks about the nation of israel being an, a light um to the nations or for the nations um it doesn't make us better it just gives us a job and that job for us as jewish people is to be the vehicle through which God brings his message to the entire world. Never again will there be a Tower of Babel. But what we do want to achieve is some level of unity, not forced unity, not a unity of thought. And the, yes, there will continue to be many perspectives, but we want to create a situation where at the very least, everybody turns to God and believes in him as the one God creator of the universe. Have a wonderful weekend. Shabbat Shalom. I hope you enjoyed that video, and we'd like to be sure you're getting all of our video content. So just click on the subscribe button below, as well as on the notification bell. And that way you will have easy access to all our material. We look forward to staying in touch with you. God bless you, and have a wonderful day.